John Beeline has been known as an offensive specialist throughout his coaching career. In 2013, Michigan went to the national championship game with one of the best offenses in the country. In 2014, they went to the Elite Eight with the best offense and worst defense of any Sweet 16 team. And that story was very similar for the 2017 Sweet 16 team as well. You can see that Michigan is in the bottom right quadrant every time, meaning good O and, relatively speaking, poor D. That all changed last year. Michigan went back to the national championship game, this time with the best defense of the Sweet 16 teams and a slightly below average offense. Which brings us to this year's team, which has come out on fire defensively. They are first in the country in efficiency. But in a year where there's some very good teams at the top, Michigan may need to move into that green area in the top right for the first time in Beeline's tenure. It's not that you can't win being dominant on just one side of the ball. Clearly, Beeline has proven that you can, but increasing the offensive efficiency like they did against Purdue would certainly increase the probability of tournament success. Let's take a look at the Purdue matchup and how sustainable Michigan's performance in that game is going forward. John Beeline has been running the same sets for years. He's faced Matt Painter 22 times since taking the Michigan job, so the Purdue staff knows the Michigan system well. One of the potential reasons why Michigan's offense has lost some of its effectiveness in recent years is the shift towards more switching on defense. That's exactly what Painter did all game. Purdue willingly switched most screens for all 40 minutes against Michigan. Here's a classic beeline set that Michigan ran 11 times on Saturday. Purdue was very well prepared for it. They switched the initial slice screen to avoid giving up an easy layup and basically eliminate that action altogether. Then they top lock the guy who set the screen. Because the play ultimately results in a screen the screener action to get a three. Top locking is basically like a full denial that allows the defender to get to the screen before the offense. Purdue executed the top lock and switch 10 out of 11 times. Signs of a very well prepared team. You can see the one time they didn't execute it here. Carson Edwards doesn't realize the slice screen is coming and doesn't get into position to top lock. Matthews actually rejects the screen and nails the three. The counter to top locking is a backdoor cut, and that's exactly what Michigan did. Poole sets up the top locker, who in this case is Eifert, like he's going for the regular action only to reject for the backdoor. But this was just the beginning of the chess match. Painter used the guys guarding Teske to provide help for the backdoor cuts. Here Brooks backdoors, but Harms prevents the basket by helping off of Teske. What makes Michigan extremely hard to guard is if Teske can knock down the open three. Harms helps again this time on the back cut, but Teske steps up and confidently hits one of his two threes of the game. Purdue is also switching all ball screens, regardless of who the ball handler or defender was. And that was really the story of the first half. Michigan stopped running their sets all together in the first half and simply put Harms or Boudreaux in ball screens to force mismatches. The logic behind Purdue's decision to switch is pretty simple. Michigan runs actions that are very hard to guard and put you in rotations. Switching solves those problems and forces the offense to just go into iso ball instead. But Harms and Boudreaux didn't show great ability in defending Michigan guards. Michigan did force some shots, but as you can see in these clips, I think that Michigan was able to take advantage of the switches. If you do decide to switch, the whole point is to completely avoid rotations. Defensive rotations lead to open threes and long closeouts. So you have to live with the results of the ISO if you're going to commit to switching. But these three clips where Purdue overhelps completely defeat the whole purpose of the switch. Michigan had multiple ways of attacking switches, one being what's called a boomerang pass. Here you can see Simpson get the switch on harms and give the ball up right away, only to get it back. That's the boomerang. This makes it even harder for harms to guard. Simpson is able to either back up and get a running start at him or be in a triple threat position where he can get the big off balance.
A little later in the game, Michigan went to the other end of the switch, which is posting up Teske. I don't think post-ups are Michigan's preferred offense, but it does look really easy on a play like this where Edwards is switched onto Teske. Another action you have against the switches is to not force the action into the mismatch and instead just keep running your offense. A lot of teams aren't great at this, but the mismatches from the switch will manifest itself later on in the natural flow of the possession. Harm switches on to pool here and after a driving kick is forced to do something he rarely has to do, close out on a guard. This time Williams switches in off ball action. Instead of going at Williams right away when the ball gets reversed, Williams is forced to make a closeout that he doesn't really have the foot speed for versus Iggy. The final way Michigan attacked the switches was mostly a second half adjustment, but they did do it one time here towards the end of the first half. Teske comes up like he's setting a ball screen, which Boudreaux is preparing to switch. But when Teske either slips or blurs the screen, it creates Purdue confusion. This blur action was the story of the second half and was very hard for Purdue to guard. It's even more difficult when the screener can pick and pop for a three like right here. The slips led to a lot of potential pocket passes for Simpson. His lack of size limits him from being able to throw over the top. Here he has Teske open or could maybe even no look to Matthews for a three, but he's unable to deliver the ball. This time he makes the pocket pass, but it's not on target. I'm not saying Simpson isn't capable. Here he ball fakes to create an angle to eventually deliver the ball to Teske. What could really change Michigan's offensive dynamic going forward is if Teske makes opponents have to respect his jump shot. This is a great example of the power of floor spacing. Teske doesn't set the screen and just pops to the three instead. And here you can see what happens if the defense has to worry about Teske. Edwards feels the need to not just stunt, but basically fully rotate to Teske, which leads to an open three after ball movement. Obviously, just the fact that Michigan hit shots solved a lot of offensive problems. But even if we ignore the results of the Purdue game, the process was also very good for Michigan's offense going up against a well-prepared team. Purdue, for the most part, did a good job of executing their game plan. And I'd argue their game plan was even fairly smart. But the switches just didn't work and that could be a good sign for Michigan going forward as defenses prepare for playing them.